Well, you you guys know how to ride in there, right? The, how you both fit in there? Daddy! <laughs> <laughs> my shoe! You don't really need your shoe. And why is there a light down there? So these guys are probably only, you guys are probably 60 pounds combination. It's still pretty light. <laughs> All right, there you go. All right. <laughs> So this is a cargo bike that I ended up building for this woman. That I don't think she's a big cyclist. But she wanted to be able to use it to get groceries and haul her dog around. Basically, this is meant to haul heavy, heavy loads. Like, you know, this thing will hold a couple hundred pounds easily and you'll still be able to pedal it. Yeah, there's some, there's some kind of cool built-in features on this thing too. So there's actually a U-lock built into this rack. So this was actually designed so when you pull up to like a pole, like on a sidewalk, you can actually unlock that roll right into a pole and lock the bike up so the lock is kind of built into the frame and then there's a headlight here this is another bike that i built and it's basically a, a town bike like a commuter bike there's a generator hub which powers up these lights this is actually if you notice here there's a wire instead of a cable mm -hmm. and this actually has electronic shifting this shifts up mm -hmm. and this shifts down yeah. And there's a little readout here that says what gear it's on. So there's no cables and there's nothing to adjust. So what I do that's kind of different than going to a shop and buying a, an existing bike. And what I do is basically I cut tubes and make frames specifically for that person. It's, it's kind of like getting a custom suit. Let's do a little quick fitting. Go ahead and stand, you know, like maybe a foot apart mm -hmm. like this. Mm -hmm. And I'll take your inseam and we'll take your overall height. Right. When someone orders a custom frame, basically I measure people up. So if you just stretch out an arm, measured arm length, height, inseam. So when I go to design a frame around this, there's a little sizing cycle right here. I start moving this thing around to different measurements. So what I do now is I pretty much set this thing up to where I think you should be writing, mm -hmm. and then we fine tune it. So it's 33, 40, 8, 40. So this basically will give you your standover height. So what I normally do is, you know, kind of put it in the ballpark where I think you should be riding. So then you can kind of get on it. This is where it comes in as far as uh, getting you the right size bike, basically. So this is where someone can sit here for a little while and try your hands in different positions. So you're basically gonna try it out here, try it down there. And I look at your back. Yeah, so like this doesn't actually look that bad on you. Feels, and, so, uh, and a lot of people, you know, okay, well, it might feel a little short and I can extend this or extend, extend the whole top too. So you too. hold a conversation now. You right. Have to Fine tailor. Exactly. And then once this is dialed, there's some key measurements I take. So the handlebar height. So when I go to set up the complete bike, so when I go to put all the components on it, it's in the right spot. But everything else down here is what I build. Okay. So basically I'll be building, you know, you this size frame and you'll already know what it feels like. Mm -hmm. You think it's uh, similar so. to a suit that when you fine tailor something, uh, you can tell the difference? I think so, yeah. Because another thing that I do that you can't see is picking and choosing the right tubing for that customer. So normally a production bike, they'll probably overbuild it generally. So it's a little heavier because they don't know who's gonna own it, right? So in my case, I kind of ask you your weight, your riding style, what you're gonna do with it, and I can pretty much fine tune the tubing itself. And basically what I do is I generate a drawing like this for a customer. And so they kind of get to see what their frame is gonna look like, the geometry and the way the slope of the top tube is. And this is kind of what I build off of. Junior high, I took wood shop. <laughs> so I've actually never worked with metal until I got into frame building. And so right before it goes to paint, or after it gets done getting built, basically all the frames get aligned to make sure that it's perfectly like leveled with each other. And that's what this process is. I was in art school. And I was, I was into riding, so I rode my bike a lot. A bunch of my friends were racing and things like that. And I was like, you know, I don't race. Like, I'm not competitive at all. <laughs> so, and I, I like working with my hands. So I started calling around to different bike companies. And I found a guy in Santa Cruz, and he kind of took me in. So yeah, that looks pretty good. There's a handful of frame builders that kind of do what I do. All over the world, you know, there's people that build frames. And I think it's kind of a dying art a little bit because it's you know 
I don't know that many people that get into frame building because <laughs> you, you kind of have to be passionate about it, I think, and it's kind of something you want to do because it's a lot of work involved and you don't get paid that much. So this is a fork that I make. So I make custom forks as well, not just the frames. Um, and this happens to have a disc brake mount. The way the cable comes in, it does require a little cable stop, which I'll do right now. I like just build, I guess, making things. <laughs> I didn't just take a class. It took, it took a long time to actually get confident enough to where I know, you know the bikes that I build isn't gonna fall apart. Hey, there you go. So that's pretty much secured on there. And that's, you know, it's not like I'm making a sculpture. You know, someone could get hurt on this. Like if someone, if the, the frame fails, you know. This is, so I usually take a nice wheel that I know that's straight and, and kind of check it. I guess the, the, fact, the fact that you can that you can build something that's usable, that's functional, that, it, that it's actually functional. It's like it's like making art that people can actually ride and use it is, is a big deal to me. This is actually a is my touring bike and I built it a couple years ago. It's got fenders, it's got front and rear racks to hold groceries or whatnot. In integrated with the frame is a bike lock. So you pull this cable out, locks to a post, and it, there's a key on this other side and it kind of locks it in place. I mean, someone can snap the cable, but it's a deterrent <laughs> at least. If you notice, this thing has couplings on it. And what these are for, this, the frame basically breaks in half and, and, you, and it goes into a suitcase. So instead of paying like oversized fees every time you fly an airplane, that actually fits in a non-oversized suitcase. And so you can check it in the airlines and there's no oversized fees or anything. So this thing, this thing is my barbecue bike. There's a battery pack right here. It has an electric assist motor and then basically it built it to haul a barbecue. It's got stands that I made. So when I'm going off road, I can level the bike off. So these are bags that Hook on right here. So we carry sausages and beers and whatever else we want to carry. <laughs> so that's that. And then this thing is up here. And I basically built this rack specifically to hold this barbecue. It's a little propane grill. So that's how it looks when I'm actually riding <laughs> around. We take this thing mountain biking basically and we go off road with it. So like on trails and stuff, yeah, it's great. It actually works really good up hills. Once we're at, at a place where we want to be, we're just hanging out, the grill comes out <laughs> and we're able to grill stuff on the spot. So and we'll actually just set up the grill right here. It holds a little propane tank yeah, and it works good. So this thing serves as a table. It's gotten lots of use out of it. So we've been taking this out quite a bit, like on barbecues and cooking sausages on the, tra on the trail, like while we're riding. You know, we'll park in the lake or up in the park somewhere. So it's got a knife here. It's kind of getting rusty. And then here's, uh, so obviously you need a little bottle opener. This is the cutting board. So, so normally, you know, there'd be sausages here. We probably should have like made a little juice drip uh, area because the juice is like overflow and everything, it gets pretty messy. <laughs> Do you feel like bikes can now be totally customizable? Yeah, I mean, that's kind of what I do. I mean, just finding things like this online, you know, a small enough grill that, we, that can be like transportable, you know, by bike. It's been great. Or I'm able to make things around, you know, something that I want to use basically. Well, this bike right here, I just got done building yesterday. You know, when I go to weld it, it's actually, this is the actual fixture that holds this thing together. Do you have any aspirations to make a lot of money and get big? I want to get huge. <laughs> I want to rule the world. No, I mean, I want to make enough to survive, basically. It used to be like, hey, that's just like a hobby. It, it kind of is, because I love what I do. <laughs> I like building things. And I like to see the bikes getting ridden. No hands! 
It, it feels really good. I mean, it's great when I see someone that fits on their bike and they have a big smile on their face when they're riding in. And it's, you know, it's riding a bike's fun, right? <laughs> All right. Dropping you guys off. <laughs>